I know you're probably typically used to seeing actual drift edits on this channel so far. I figured I'd try something a little different since there's kind of an opportunity to have like a small series. Well, it's probably going to be a long series, but there's an opportunity to have kind of a series going. So I figured I would take you along for the ride, kind of show you what I have going on. Right next to me is a M50 motor. Um, the plan with this is to do a semi-budget friendly turbo build on. When I say budget friendly, I don't necessarily want to completely cheap out on every part. I know that stuff can kind of come around and bite you in the end of it. So I kind of want to just focus on like bang for your buck type things. I don't want to use eBay parts, stuff like that, unless it's going to be something that's like either cool, something different that you don't usually see, or something that doesn't necessarily matter in the long scheme of things. And I've tried to focus on getting some decent stuff for this thing. So let me show you some of the stuff that I have and I'll give you a quick walk around of the engine. So the first part I want to talk about is um, probably the one I'm most excited about out of the entire bunch. It's an exhaust manifold and I'm stoked on it because it's weird, different, cool. It's from across the Atlantic Ocean from Poland. It's made by K64. I'm in a couple Facebook groups for boosting E36s and stuff like that and I've tried to do a pretty good amount of research but this is the unit. It's set up for a GT, let me see if you can see it. Probably not. It's set up for a GT35 style turbo. It's got a 44 millimeter spot for wastegate. Um, and this thing is just freaking sweet, dude. I've seen some of the other top mount manifolds that have like kind of eh, iffy fitment or don't really have like wastegate priority here. And that's something I really wanted to avoid was basically overboost. Um, I see a lot of people that have troubles with it. So I'm hoping that it's kind of hard to see, but like the two main ends from the exhaust that run along right here, I'm hoping that right here is enough. And from what I've seen on the K64 page, they have a lot of success with that rather than like the CX style, which I'm not even sure where that comes from. I think it's the same idea, but further back and it comes like all the way to the back. So it's not really priority wise that great for your exhaust. So I'm hoping that this guy being in the front will be beneficial in the long run. And I think it will. Plus this thing looks freaking sweet. Like. Come on. Second piece I want to talk about is, so I know I said I didn't necessarily want to be using eBay stuff, but I had to make an exception for this thing because A, my buddy Josh uh, gave me a sweet deal on this thing. I'll tag him in the video somewhere around here, but yeah, this thing is gnarly. It's another manifold. This is an intake manifold and it's terrifying, honestly. Like, oh, it's this, it's huge. It's, it's wider than me. So, a lot of people typically will just run um, like an M50 manifold, which I have, and it's totally fine. There's no reason not to. But like I said, this is cool. It's different. Uh, it was a good price, and I think it's going to look gnarly all mounted up. Um, when I was cleaning up the engine a little, I did kind of mock mount these just to see how they look on it. And this thing's going to be gnarly, like this giant freaking... I don't know. I think I think it'll be sick. It does have a throttle body that's with it over there that's equally giant and crazy. I haven't measured it yet, but like that's huge. I can almost fit like my entire fist through there. So I'm pretty stoked to uh, get those things mounted up. It also has a fuel rail attached, which I'm I don't know. We'll see. We'll have to see how that mounts. Um, I do have DECA injectors to go on it, which I may change in the future. I've seen some people um, have some issues with them. Mostly I like idle and things like that, but they seem to be good when they're good, but fairly inconsistent. So these are just in a box. It's not that exciting. But yeah, that's that on that. While we're on the subject of fueling, next kind of piece of the puzzles, fuel pump, unsurprisingly. It's a uh, Deechworks 200, which I think is equivalent to like a Walboro, Walboro, however the hell you say their name, uh, 255. So this thing flows, yeah, 255 liters per hour at 40 PSI. So that should be more than enough for like my power goals, I guess. The kind of idea behind this is that I don't really want to be pushing more than like 14 or 15 PSI at the most. I don't really need that kind of power and then like other stuff on the car is going to start to break. It already starts to break stuff at stock power. So the more reasonable I can keep it, the better. If down the line I decide to do something, then I can address that then. But I think for like a first build type of thing, somewhere in the 15-ish PSI range is totally doable and fairly safe for the most part. Another thing, I guess that kind of counts as fueling. Not really. This is just an AFR gauge. I got a lot of this stuff in kind of a package deal from one of my buddies, Dan. So he had planned on doing a turbo thing and had decided against it a little down the road. So from him, I ended up getting this manifold, the injectors, fuel pump, and um, that AFR gauge. So 
that's a pretty good chunk. Oh, and this actually, and this, which is just um, valve cover type of deal. So I'm going to, I know this one doesn't have one on it, but I'm gonna get one of the magnesium ones just cause I've seen them kind of hold up better as far as heat goes. But I think this thing will be pretty sweet. It's not actually white, it's just a cover that's on it. Like you can see this little corners that will focus. Uh, is exposed so this thing will I think look pretty sweet as far as like engine bay looks go and that's like another thing I kind of had in mind is like I'd, I'd like as far as like the exhaust manifold intake manifold the cover stuff like that like I do want it to look kind of cool you know what I mean like I don't want it to just be something you breeze by another piece of the puzzle that I have that's in a box somewhere over there is a CX racing intercooler kit I figured that was a pretty safe bet as well as far as cost to effectiveness ratio especially with only wanting to push 15 pounds but those intercooler kits seem pretty decent they seem to hold up and it should bolt right up for the most part so that's definitely something that's nice is kind of ease of it you know i don't want to spend half the time just getting stuff fabricated or fabricating things and not use it i don't want to turn this into a forever build um, i'm hoping to have it done hopefully by the winter i'm really not trying to push it, I'm taking my time with it, and it's expensive, so that kind of makes sense to me. I have a box from FCP that I'll pull up here and start pulling some stuff out of, and we can go over that too. So, I haven't actually opened this box, so you can hear me opening it, so I hope it's all there, because I ordered this stuff like, uh, probably like a week and change ago. Shout out to FCP. Lifetime warranty on stuff is definitely sick, and they're fairly local to me. One of my friends, Jess, actually works there, and She's been annoying, not annoying me, but she's been bugging me about picking up more parts that may be something that would kind of break or something that might be iffy. So, shout out to her for being the voice of reason in all of this, because honestly, it's a smart idea. They did not skimp on pack. All right, let's look, what do we got? Oh, so this is a big one that a lot of people have recommended and I'm surprised I haven't done it on the naturally aspirated one. It's a Stuart fuel, our uh, fuel pump, Stuart uh, water pump. I have no idea. So the engine, I have no idea really the general condition of things. So my basic idea with most of this stuff in the box is basically just to refresh it. So I want to go through, do most of the gaskets, things like that. More than likely we'll do bearings despite I don't really want to pull it apart because that gets turning into a whole thing, but it is what it is. So, um, FCP has kind of a small kit as far as cooling goes. So you get the water pump, you get the pulley for it, you get fresh belt for it. I think that's it for that actually, as far as that kit goes. So Stuart water pump, I think will be a huge upgrade. I'm pretty stoked on that. These cars already get kind of hot, even just naturally aspirated. So cooling is definitely something I want to prioritize. I got a new metal thermostat cover as opposed to the plastic ones that typically come on it. I kind of want to get this thing powder coated. I use like that like off pink-ish color for uh, a lot of my stuff. I think this thing would look sick pink in the engine bay, but let me know your thoughts on that. So I have the cover and then there's also, surprisingly, I got the Borg Warner uh, thermostat. So this one, I think the stock thermostats are 88 degrees Celsius. Um, I believe I got the 75 degrees Celsius. So that should help it run a little bit cooler, help fight some of those temps a little bit. The only thing cooling wise I haven't picked up yet is a radiator, but that's something I'm not gonna need for a hot minute, but I'll probably get like a decent um, aluminum radiator. So the rest, oh, actually, surprisingly, is this non diluted All right. So I run the green stuff right now, which everyone yells about in BMW groups, but I've got actual BMW coolant now. So hopefully I'm not gonna get berated by people in the frickin' BMW groups any longer. Pretty much the rest of this box is just gonna be gasket kits. So I got a bottom end and top end gasket kit. So that'll come with valve cover gasket, which I'm trying to pull out maybe. Yeah, so that comes with, Jesus, um, valve cover gasket, which um, I'm not gonna be surprised if that thing's hemorrhaging oil. I've cleaned a bunch of gunk off of it already, but it's still pretty crusty, so that's a nice thing to have. And then all the bottom end stuff, all these gaskets, so oil pan, all that, all that happy stuff. One thing I do need to do is um, oil pump nut. The, you can probably do it yourself, but there's also like a $5 kit on, uh, I think Bimmer World has it, where it's just the nut with a little piece of wire. I did it on the M52, but um, that just helps it from backing off. I 
I didn't have trouble with it when we did um, my oil pan gasket. We checked it and the thing was super snug. Didn't seem like it was going anywhere, but just for kind of the peace of mind thing, the last thing I really want is for that to back off. It's a really good way to ruin a day. Yeah, so that's it. Pretty much the only big things I need at this point are going to be a turbo itself. So this is another one of those like potentially maybe an eBay item, but as far as those go, it's kind of like a kind of want to do it right the first time and not worry about it. But I've also seen people put those little eBay turbos through hell and back. So I know they kind of hold up one like quote unquote like eBay brand that I was considering as far as turbo goes is Pulsar. And so Pulsar is basically like a Garrett knockoff from what I've seen, but their stuff looks really decent. It's not like your typical just oil and that's it journal bearing type thing. They do have dual ball bearing. They have water cooled applications and stuff like that for a very reasonable price. I think the ones I had looked at were a 3076 and a 3576 just for rough pricing wise. And I think they're somewhere around like 700 bucks, which for something like that, if I were to go Garrett is probably easily double the price. But again, kind of what I said, you get what you pay for with stuff like that. So that's just, I don't know, another thing that's like, eh, maybe one of the other things that I'm going to need is a standalone. So I know you can 100% tune the stock DME and I'm not like opposed to that, but with tuning the stock DME, I think it would be fine for like street use or maybe even like drag use or something like that. But with drifting where this thing is going to be seeing rev limiter frequently kind of be being abused in general. I like the idea of having all those safeguards that you can tune into stuff. So like if I start to run too hot, you can have it just yank timing so that it shuts down basically. And, things like that and I know you can get way more out of it with a standalone so there's a few options for that but the one I'm leaning towards the most is ECU Master. They have basically a plug and play application for it. Pretty much all the tuners that I'm considering all support it so that's a great option. If I decide to go another route it would either be it would probably just be Link. Haltech is great. Their stuff is awesome. Uh, it's a little out of my budget for the time being, and I don't necessarily want to do a bunch of wiring. Not that fun. I'm not that good at it. So I don't I don't want to open a whole can of worms and have to worry about that. If I can get a standalone that I can just plug in, be done with it, that's, in my opinion, going to be the move for me. So I don't know what these even go for. Go to FCP, thank you for the four bolts. I don't... I'm not sure what they're for yet. And pretty much the only other thing that I need at this point, other than what I've already mentioned, um, the only other big thing is a wastegate. Um, that'll probably be a tile. Um, tile, is that how you say it? I'm pretty sure it is. But they make a 44 millimeter wastegate, which is what the exhaust manifold already has on it as far as um, a flange. So I think it'll probably be a tile. I would also consider like a Precision or a Turbo Smart, but they're both different size, they're like different sized basically. So. I think Turbo Smart has a 50, and I think Precision's the same way. I think they're both just a little big. So yeah, it'll probably just be a tile. I think it's a MVR 44 millimeter or something like that. Um, their products are great, they hold up. So yeah, I'm not really too worried about that. So those are my only real big things so far. The CX Racing intercooler kit comes with its own blow off valve. I'll probably end up replacing that more than likely, but for the time being, I'm not super worried about it. I'm not sure what I would do for that. I, like part of me really wants to get like the super obnoxious, um, I think HKS makes it, the SSQV or whatever, the one that like whistles super obnoxiously. It's annoying, but I think it's kind of sick at the same time, but eh, I don't know, we'll see. I don't want it to be too annoying, but actually I kind of do. So like one of the reasons I'm considering that Pulsar is because you can get the T51 mod to it. So basically that is just super loud um, turbo whistle while it's spooling. I can't remember the company that they based that off of, but if I can find like an example, I'll cut it in here so you can hear it if you've never heard one before, but they're super gnarly. And then other turbo options I was considering while I'm still talking about it. If I don't end up going Pulsar and I want to get something um, a little more name brand would be Borg Warner again. So the 257, which in like size dimensions, I think is a, it's like a precision 5858, but slightly bigger on the cold side. I believe it's like a 5861 or something like that. And I know a lot of people run 5858s, um, they spool fast, so I, wouldn't be opposed to either one of those, but I'm still kind of leaning on 
either Pulsar or probably Borg Warner, just because um, you you can get the T51 mod on both of them super easy, and it's sick, and I want it just to be up front. The last and final like big item that I need is a head gasket spacer kit. So you can run like an MLS um, like .140 and that'll give you appropriate spacing um, to lower your compression enough to run 93 safely. But I've seen some people have issues with them and I haven't seen a lot of people have issues with copper spacer and cut ring gasket. So CES Motorsports makes a kit for that as well. So it's a copper spacer and a cut ring head gasket and it comes with ARP uh, head studs. So that's really one of the only big things that's stopping me from really yanking this thing apart completely and buttoning it all back together. I'd considered running just like an E85 or like a race gas type thing, but that really would shoot myself in the foot as far as um, convenience. So we're in the Northeast, um, E85 doesn't exist really. I think the closest pump gas I could get is Boston. I'm not really too keen on the idea of driving to Boston just to get pump grade E85. Um, at that point, I'd rather just buy cans of it, but then you have like the shelf life problem and. It's kind of a can of worms. I think power wise, like it would be great because I'd get a ton out of it and I wouldn't necessarily need to do the copper gasket and all that stuff if I ran something that could handle um, the compression that this thing is going to be doing. But I, I think having that spacer and the cut ring, um, I think in the long run will be well worth it because then if I decide more power down the road, it's already set up. But yeah, I don't, I, again, it's kind of all up in the air type stuff, but I don't really want to limit myself to just running E85 or just race fuel. So as much as this is mostly primarily a track car, I also, I want to be able to drive it around here and there on the street just for fun. Um, it's a cool car. It's fun. So I've already done a little bit of cleanup work on it. Um, it's an M50 B25 TU. So as far as I know, it's basically like an M52, but it's still OBD1. Like I said, I've cleaned some of it up here and there. I still need to take some of the stuff off. Um, I'll probably end up painting the sides of it and stuff like that. I think uh, that would sharpen it up a little bit. But again, general idea, just do all the gaskets, um, anything I really need to. I'm really also toying with the idea of doing cams. But again, that's pricey. I don't... Uh, like I, I want to because I think it would sound sick and it would definitely help power wise but kind of hard to justify cost wise when I'm only like my power goals are pretty low so uh, I don't know I don't know yeah those are my thoughts on that so if you can think of anything I missed that's major um, let me know for sure this is my first time doing something like this which is why I'm like really trying to go slow and research as much as I can so um, if there's anything that you can think of that you're like, oh, Devin, hey, dummy, uh, you forgot about this. Um, let me know in the comments or shoot me a message or something like that. Um, I'll take all the advice I can get, even if it's like kind of an opposing view. Um, that doesn't really bother, bother me. Knowledge is power and all that. So yeah, that's it. Thank you for tuning in. Like I said, this is kind of a new thing for me. So it's, uh, it's, it's fun, it's exciting, and it's a uh, new avenue. So much appreciated. I'll see you next time.